Some of you have made yourselves grand judge and jury over your lives. I hear the people of the world say that God is wicked. How could he watch the people he created get sent to hell? Mm. But today, this isn't even about that. This is about the fact that some of you judge yourselves even worse than God would judge you. If you hide your way, you will send yourself to hell. You show yourself no mercy. I know you've made mistakes. I know they might not even have been mistakes. You might have deliberately hurt people in the past. You might have even killed or maimed people. And now you want to come to God, but you feel like your sins are just too many. And so, your guilt is holding you back. What you don't understand is that your sins have been paid for. Someone bore your punishment. It is true that at some point you deserve no mercy, but someone took that upon himself so that you would receive mercy. When will you listen to the blood? You're caught up in your sins and in your pride. You don't know that it's a pride, but it is. The thought that someone else would carry your punishment for you is too much for you to bear. It's too great a gift for you to collect, so you don't want it. You'd rather languish in self-condemnation when there's a whole lot waiting ahead for you. Even Cain did better for himself. The story of Cain and Abel is a popular story, but many times we focus on the wickedness of Cain and not on the mercy of God. It happened that Cain and Abel brought sacrifices to God. Cain's sacrifice was not accepted and judging from the state of his heart, it wasn't hard to see why. However, Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Cain was filled with jealousy. How many of you are ashamed of the actions you've taken because you were jealous? What many do not realize is that envy is a powerful emotion. Many of the sins that exist can be traced to envy. Envy will lead you to hate, then it will lead you to bitterness and resentment. And if you're not careful, you just might murder someone. When envy comes knocking, Common sense seems to go out the window because in Genesis chapter 4 verse 6, the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. So God warned Cain, God, in his mercy, saw that Cain was dealing with an emotion that could consume him. But Cain didn't listen. And this is why many of you are beating yourselves up. You were warned. People tried to tell you. God tried to tell you, but you didn't listen. So as Cain spoke to his brother in the field, and immediately the brother turned his head, he killed him. Cain killed Abel for no reason apart from the fact that he was envious. This story is being shared right now so you know that there is nothing you have done that isn't covered by grace. There is nothing you have done that Jesus hasn't atoned for. But there is more to the story. So the Lord called out to Cain and asked him for his brother. Cain, still being wicked, said, Am I my brother's keeper? And then God said to him, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And God punished him. The ground was no longer going to yield any increase for him. God also called him a fugitive and a vagabond. But Cain, who just murdered his brother, and show no form of remorse, said, My punishment is greater than I can bear. I know you know the rest of the story. Cain cried out to God not to ask for forgiveness, not to say he was sorry, but to ask for a lesser judgment. And God heard him. 
God answered him. Cain went on to live his life. He got married and had children. But this story isn't really about Cain. It's about how merciful God is. If God were lighting the judgment he gave to Cain, why do you think he's interested in your perishing regardless of what you have done, especially when you have repented? The blood of Abel cried out for justice. The blood of Abel cried out for vengeance. That was what God heard. Uh, for some of you, certain voices are crying out against you. Certain voices are crying out for vengeance. Yet God sent his son to take the vengeance upon himself. And today the blood of Jesus speaks for us all. Because the blood speaks. If Abel's blood could cry out and God will hear, what do you think about the blood of Jesus? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the blood of Jesus speaks better things for you than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus isn't crying out for vengeance. What you should be asking is, what then is his blood speaking? His blood is speaking mercy over you. Are you listening? His blood is speaking love over you. He knows you don't deserve it, but he says you don't need to deserve it. His blood is enough for you. His blood is speaking restoration over you. You've lost your peace. You've lost your strength. You've lost your joy. You even lost your mind. You lost everything all because you started listening to the blood of Abel. You see the blood of Abel as the voice that speaks of condemnation. The blood of Abel speaks of damnation for you. The blood of Abel tells you that you don't deserve mercy. The blood of Abel tells you that you're not deserving of anything good. The blood of Abel is always crying out for vengeance. You might indeed deserve her condemnation, but the blood of Jesus is of a much higher authority than the blood of Abel. Once you come under the blood of Jesus, the blood of Abel loses its potency over you. But you need to make a choice. Would you continue to listen to the blood of Abel or would you listen to the blood of Jesus? The ball is in your cart. My favorite scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in his blood that was shed for you? His blood is speaking over you, but you need to listen. His blood speaks of a new life. One that is free from guilt and condemnation. A new life that is free from the fear of death and damnation. His blood speaks of a new life that is free from the pressure of trying to live up to the expectations of the world. His blood speaks of peace and rest. His blood doesn't speak of a life where there would be no trials and tribulations, but of a life where you are assured of the peace of God that passes all understanding. His blood speaks of an adoption, your adoption into the fold where God becomes your father and you his child. His blood is speaking. Would you listen? We live in a world today filled with so much hate and strive. Hurt people are hurting people and there's pain and oppression everywhere. The land reeks of the stench of evil. All over the land, the blood of innocents cry out. They want vengeance, but the blood of Jesus is their appeasement. The blood of Jesus is our atonement. We must all begin to listen to the blood. Our land needs healing. She needs healing from all the hate and bitterness that has existed from the beginning. Our land needs peace again. There has been too much tension and strife in the land. If we all listened to the blood, there would be more love in our world. Because the blood saved us that we might draw others 
to be saved. The blood showed us love so that we might show others love. The blood showed us mercy that we might show others mercy. The blood extended his grace to us so that we might extend that same grace to others. Are you a believer who has allowed yourself to languish in self-condemnation? Are you living a life devoid of rest and peace? Didn't Jesus say that you should come to him if you were burdened and heavy laden so that he would give you rest? We have so many cases of suicide and depression in the world today because we haven't been listening to the blood. Wherever you might be right now, I ask that you listen to the blood. It's always speaking. <laughs>